Um, it's nice to speak with you today, Matt. Matt, um, look forward to hear your views on uh, the talent challenge in, in supply chain, in the supply chain market. Can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dustin, for, for your time. So um, my background is um, that I've spent um, many years, uh, over 15 years, in the recruitment and executive search business. Um, I came to Hong Kong uh, in 2001, so I've been um, uh, here for, for 12 years. Um, and I came to work for a company called Connected Group, which I now um, run and, and part own. Connected Group is a um, multi-function, multi-industry um, executive search business. We have offices in Hong Kong, in Singapore, Shanghai, Beijing, a small satellite in Dubai. And um, we employ over 70 people um, and run what I would call a, a big boutique um, in, within the, the, the recruitment world. Now, my role um, is overseeing uh, all of our operations, but I, I take a very hands-on approach and I also run um, uh, one particular division within the business, which is our manufacturing supply chain sourcing uh, business, where I'm predominantly focused on uh, North Asia, um, so um, and in particular Hong Kong and China. Um, and within that, we work across um, the manufacturing industrial, so sort of technical end of the market, all the way through the supply chain uh, into corporate supply chain, so recruiting supply chain professionals for um, large corporates in areas like uh, consumer life sciences, etc. Um, and then we also work within the, um, the sourcing industry. So we work with major sourcing offices um, in pretty much all product lines um, outside of food and beverage. So um, soft lines, apparel, um, footwear, um, anything fashion related, and then hard lines, consumer electronics, toys, sports, pets, um, really um, uh, any, anything within the, uh, the sourcing realm. Thank you. And my first question is, uh, can you talk about how, the, um, how have market conditions impacted the talent market? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's quite quite key um, in terms of timing where, where we sit in the market right now. Um, we are um, at a point in the market where we're coming off the back of probably one of the most volatile years that the um, the market has experienced in, in Asia uh, for some time. So whilst the economic conditions last year were um, certainly more robust and more positive in, in Asia than, than elsewhere globally. Um, the sourcing supply chain market um, in particular was heavily impacted by um, the, the drop in demand from uh, the developed markets in, in Europe and, and the US. Um, in addition to that, you also had the um, uncertainty surrounding um, the, you know, the euro crisis, um, the, um, the U.S. Um, uh, debt issues and what that created was um, a market where even even when recruitment was a potential requirement, um, it very often wasn't executed just simply because of um, highly risk-averse uh, nature in the market. So w what we found um, particularly in the last six months of the year was that recruitment was particularly repressed. Um, so companies were not necessarily negative about market conditions and and future prospects um, but they were uncertain enough to, um, uh, to, to to delay the decision to, to hire and the senior market in particular um, was very very quiet so we saw very little movements in, in the senior market um, and we also saw a few organizations tightening belts um, maybe cutting um, you know, sort of senior um, headcount, um, expensive headcount, expat headcount. Um, so we do see right now, um, you know, sort of a few people um, with exceptional skill sets at the kind of senior strategic um, end of the um, of the supply chain business sat on the market waiting for for the change. Um, so right now we've headed out of the calendar year um, into 2011 and the Asian markets um, traditionally then sit and wait for Chinese New Year, uh, which we've now just completed. Um, and as we head into um, the Chinese New Year, we should now see um, some confidence return to the market. Um, what I'm seeing at the moment is uh, that, that generally the accepted opinion is that the markets will be uh, more consistent, uh, more transparent, and, and generally more positive. Whilst it won't be a, um, a, a boom um, as such, there will be um, certainly the need to, uh, to recruit over the course of this year. Um, however, it's still too close to the, the, the Chinese New Year um, uh, sort of breaking point for us to have seen the impact of that. So we're still very much in, in wait and see mode. Um, 
and I think clients and, and, and candidates are, are kind of uh, in the same position. So we're also post bonus time um, as well, and in the candidate market, that will that will create um, a little bit more a little bit more movement out there. Um, but but at this stage, you know, it's uh, it's still it's still kind of wait and see. So um, I think that the the risk averse nature of the market is still there. Um, there is more confidence, there's an underlying confidence, um, but people are just kind of waiting to see who moves first. And uh, have you seen a, a mentality shift in, as far as a downturn in the in the market? Um, I think so. I mean, I think um, I've been through I've been through a few downturns now um, here in in Asia and. Um, the, the, the first thing that happens is obviously the uh, the expatriate market tends to get squeezed. So um, I've certainly seen companies um, uh, localizing or restructuring and removing some of their senior expat talent that sit on uh, expensive expat packages, um, and that happens in all industries um, every time there's a um, you know this kind of shift in the market. Um, and then when the markets pick up again, um, they you know that expatriate market; those that stick around will be reabsorbed on on local contracts, and some will return um, to, to to home country. And then, you know, as, as, again, as the markets continue to pick up, companies will find talent squeeze at certain senior areas, and then they'll start to relocate people internally. And that's when you also see people coming out on those those packages again. So there's certainly a mentality shift around that. Companies tend to localize; they tend to look at um, uh, re- reducing um, you know those kind of uh, salary and, and benefit costs that, that sit heavily on the P and L. Um, I think the the biggest mentality shift is um, the, the, that you know sort of real risk averse um, nature. I.e., it's better it's better not to make a decision than to make a decision and and be caught out and be wrong uh, because the market shift. Um, and that's the same for candidates as well. So not only have we seen um, less hiring activity from um, uh, from companies, but what we see is when companies do want to hire. Um, in order to attract good talent becomes more difficult because um, those individuals that are you know, probably performing well at their current companies maybe maybe don't want to take the risk of um, moving to another organization um, and you know, being the last one in the first one out if if there is a change in, in, in market conditions. So um, definitely I, w- I would class the mentality on both sides of the market, client and candidate, as, as highly tentative. And do you have any uh, recommendations um, I think that uh, I, I certainly, from a from a from a client perspective. So let's let's look at um, so my clients. Let's look at the um, uh, employers out there in the market. Um, my recommendation is that, is that those individuals uh, or those organisations that do have um, hiring plans for this year that do have um, uh, you know a strategy mapped out where they will have uh, talent requirements is that the sooner that they move um, in, the, in in terms of um, uh, trying to secure talent, um, the, the the greater choice they will have of some of the uh, the talent that's currently available in the market. Um, I do believe that there's going to there's going to be a talent crunch in about two or three months' time as everybody starts ramping up um, and and the slack gets gets absorbed in the market. Um, in, in the meantime, because of um, changing strategy of a number of companies in the market and and some a bit of downsize and been through cost-cutting exercises. There's actually some very talented individuals um, across supply chain and in all facets of, uh, of sourcing uh, on the market, particularly at the, the upper, mid to senior end. Um, so, you know, there's some great individuals that could be um, that could be secured. Um, so, sooner rather than later would be um, my advice for, for organisations if you know you have that um, that strategy already mapped out. Um, I would also advise organizations, regardless of whatever their strategy is, is that um, there will be a, um, a, a pressure on, on talent in the market um, in, in sort of two, three months' time. Um, so for those companies that have focused on cost-cutting for the last 12, 18 months, you know, perhaps the, the message to the business has been um, more negative, um, now's the time to start focusing on how you're going to retain your, your talent through um, through the next three to six months because um, it's actually been easy to retain talent uh, over, over the last 18 months because people don't necessarily want to move um, and um, that, that is going to change. So I think it's important for organizations to realize that now's the time to start trying to lock those people down and you know, make sure that your communication strategy is, um, is built around um, ensuring that, that your talented individuals understand what their, uh, what their career path is for them moving forward. 
Um, I think for um, for for candidates, um, my advice is is be ready. Um, my advice is that although there will be an upturn in the recruitment market, we're still not talking about um, a, a a booming recruitment market. So it's important that you have um, you know your CV prepared and a true understanding of what it is that you're looking to achieve with your next move, so that when the opportunities do come out that come up that you can you, that you can grab them. Um, you know, my advice is not to put your CV out to every agency in the market and send it to every every job because um, uh, the the attitude that that potentially creates among employers when they see the same CV numerous times coming off the back of markets that have been fairly fractious, um, you know, can create a um, uh, a brand issue for, for 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 individuals in terms of the the, the resume brand, um, but um, yes, yeah, certainly be be targeted, selective, focused, and ready um, because you know there will be some interesting opportunities that come up in the market, but th there won't be a huge amount of them. So if you are looking to make a move, then uh, then you need to be prepared. Well, thank you, Matt, for sharing your views on the talent challenge in the supply chain market. No problem at all.